Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Mindy here and I hope you are doing well. Today I'm coming to you from my dining room because I have 100 fragrances on this table. This is my 100th video on YouTube, so I thought what better way to celebrate 100 videos than to talk about 100 perfumes in my collection. I have absolutely adored being on this fragrance journey, learning so much about notes and accords and fragrances in general, growing my collection. Having a channel has been really, really fun for me and it's been a good distraction through a difficult time. But most importantly, I have met so many amazing, amazing people in the fragrance community and I have had so much fun doing it. So today I'm gonna to go through 100 perfumes, but that is not all of the fragrances in my collection. I'll put up here some of the fragrances that I will be leaving out today. I do have quite a few. This was pretty eye-opening, going through this process and looking through all of my perfumes to see what I'd want to include in a 100 fragrance video. I do believe there is a lot of opportunity to go through my collection and curate it quite a bit. There's so much here and in the fragrances that I'm not using that I feel like it's time to release some of the fluff that I have, those fragrances that I don't truly love, and set them free so I can make room for a solid collection of fragrances that I absolutely love and adore. A lot of the fragrances that I left out today are my duo fragrances, a lot of fragrances that I've decluttered in other videos, some of the older fragrances that I've had in my collection, and certainly more than that. I just couldn't include them all in this video. I have challenged myself to keep this as succinct and as concise as possible. That being said, I'm not gonna go through all of the details behind each of these fragrances. I'm not gonna share all of the notes. At some point or another on my channel, I probably talked about most of these. I will try to be quick so that I don't make this 100 fragrance video 100 minutes long. Without further ado, I will go ahead and get started on 100 fragrances in my collection. So first up, I'm gonna start with the Chanel's that I have in my collection. This is Coca Mademoiselle Intense, and this is one of my very favorite fragrances in my collection. This is deep, it's alluring, it's intoxicating. It's a type of fragrance that I wear on a day where I want to feel empowered. This fragrance makes me feel like I can be at the top of my game. I really love it. I'll always have this in my collection. Similar to Coco Mademoiselle Intense is Coco Mademoiselle, the EDP, and this is also by Chanel. This is another beautiful scent that works amazing in any setting. This is a little bit more bright than the depth that you get from Coco Mademoiselle Intense. This one is perfect for all occasions. It also makes me feel really good. There's an added note of mimosa in here and it's just beautiful. Not a Chanel, but worth mentioning along these lines is Club de Nuit and this is by the House of Armagh. This is quite similar to Coco Mademoiselle Intense and it's a little bit of a mixture of both. It leans in a little bit like the Coco Mademoiselle EDP as well. This is a nice alternative if you don't want to spend Chanel dollars on a fragrance, you wanna to get to know the scent profile. I did buy this after I had Coco Mademoiselle Intense, but before I bought the EDP and found this to be an excellent option. New to my collection is Chanel Chance Eau Fraiche, and this is a gorgeous scent. This is one that has citrus in it, but it's a little bit different than a lot of the citruses on the market. This has teakwood, I believe it also has iris, it has a lot of depth, and it's not your basic citrus scent. I'm really excited to wear Chanel Chance Eau Fraiche in the summer and even the spring months. Chanel Chance EDT is another fragrance that I really enjoy. I'm not wearing this near as much because I do prefer the Coco Mademoiselles, but this one is sparkling. It's a little bit fresh. It's a little bit sweet. It's very classy. It's sophisticated like a lot of the other Chanel's in my collection. This has the added note of pineapple and I find it to be a beautiful fragrance as well. Worth mentioning here is Shiseido Zen. This is often compared to Chanel Chance and this is another one that is bright. It's cheerful. It's uplifting. It has a little bit of a citrusy vibe in a similar vein to Chanel Chance. This is a great fragrance as well. Another one that has a little bit of a woody tone and great for the spring and summer months. That is Shiseido Zen. Now I'll go ahead and move into the Lancome fragrances that are in my collection. I'll start off with the La Vie Belle line. This is La Vie Belle, the EDP. 
This is the fragrance that really kicked off my love for the Livia Bell line, and this is probably the one that I wear the least. It's pretty, it's sweet, but I have found that I love some of the other Livia Bell, some of the flankers more than the original. Next up is Livia Bell. This is Intense Mint, and this has a raspberry note. This is one that I adore wearing in the fall. For whatever reason, when fall comes around, it starts getting cooler. I start craving that beautiful raspberry note that's in here. It seems like it warms me up a little bit. Really love this one as well. La Via Belle Le Clot is one that I didn't really plan on bringing into my collection. It wasn't one that intrigued me too much because it has that orange blossom note. It has a little bit more of a white floral scent profile to it but I did end up trying this at Kohl's and loved it on my skin and then found that I had to have it in my collection. La Via Belle Intense is arguably one of my very favorite La Via Belle scents. This one has notes of hazelnut, it has notes of whipped cream, it is the perfect gourmand La Via Belle scent, one that I really adore. I have bought this one as a gift for other people and I love smelling it on them. Last up is Soleil Cristal. This is one of the newer La Via Bells to my collection and this is the fragrance that started my YouTube journey. This is the first fragrance that I ever spoke about on my channel. It has added notes of coconut, there's ylang ylang in here. It's a little bit more of a beachy, summery vibe to it. Really enjoy this one, have special memories with this fragrance. This is Soleil Cristal. A perfume that I wanted to mention while I was talking about the La Via Bells is Malbusin Elixir Pour L. This is a fragrance that is often compared to La Via Belle, the original EDP. I do think it smells similar to La Via Belle, as if it didn't have that same amount of fruitiness. It has oud in it, but it's a very subtle, gentle oud. This is the type of fragrance you might reach for if you like La Via Belle, but you just find it to be too fruity. Now moving into the La Nuit Trésor line. First I have here is La Nuit Trésor, the EDP. This one is gorgeous, and this is the one that sparked me to explore more of the La Nuit Trésors. This has a little bit of a fruitiness to it. It has a little bit of depth. If I remember correctly, it has incense. It may have strawberry, but it also has a little bit of vanilla in it as well. This is a beautiful, dark, sweet, fruity type fragrance. This is also one that I bought as a gift for other people and I love smelling it on them. My mom wore this once out when she went on a date night with my dad, and she said she got three compliments the first few minutes she was in the restaurant. So this is La Nuit Trésor, the original EDP. Next is La Nuit Trésor à la Folie. It's been a while since I went back and reassessed the top fragrances in my collection, but this one is probably still in the top three to five. It is absolutely beautiful. You get a little bit of fruitiness here, but there's kind of a sweet, almost smoky, vanillic type scent profile in this one, and I find it to be exquisite. There are rumors that are saying that the La Nuit Trésor line is going to be discontinued, that the La Nuit Trésor Intense is not gonna be available in the US. So I am stocking up on this particular fragrance. This is one that I love, adore, I have a backup bottle for, and I'm gonna want more if this is being discontinued. This is La Nuit Trésor Nude. This is one that is gentle, it's soft, but it is a beautiful coconut vanillic scent. This is the type of perfume that you may want to wear if you're going to a beach or if you want to think about a beach. It has just a little bit of a beachy, tropical undertone to it. I find this to be lovely. Coconut lovers have to get their nose on this one because it's so smooth, it's well blended, it's a gorgeous fragrance. This is La Nuit Trésor Mastiamat, and this is the last La Nuit Trésor that I've had in my collection. This is one that smells very beautiful. I had a sample of this, I sprayed it in my basement, and the smell in my basement was exquisite. That being said, I don't love this on my own skin. I love the scent, but I don't like it on me. It has some vanillic musk, some raspberry to it, gorgeous scent, one that I think a lot of people who like musky fragrances may enjoy. All right, time to move into the Mugler fragrances that I have in my collection. Again, that makes me think of the recent loss of Terry Mugler. So, so saddened for this community to experience such a deep loss. Someone so influential on fragrance, on fashion, 
impacted so many people's lives. First up is Angel Muse EDT, and this may be one of the most talked about gourmands on my channel. Just really love this beautiful scent. It has hazelnut cocoa spread, there's caramel, there's chocolate in here. This is perfect for gourmand lovers who like just a little bit of spiciness in their perfumes. Similar to Angel Muse EDT is the EDP. This is also slightly spicy. It's a very beautiful fragrance, but this one goes a little bit darker, richer, denser. This one can be a little bit heavy, where I feel like the EDT is very versatile year round. This is one that I don't crave unless I'm really in those cooler winter months. All right, moving on to Alien by Mugler. This is a fragrance that I know is so deeply loved in the fragrance community, but this one just doesn't work for me. I see somebody who has a fun, vibrant personality wearing this, and I like to think that I'm that, but this just does not feel like me. Maybe it's a jasmine that's in here. Maybe it's that purple tone that you get from it. This just isn't my style, but I could definitely appreciate it on other people. This is Angel the EDT, not to be confused with the EDP, which I hear is a lot more dense, more chocolate, and sometimes people consider it to be cloying, though I don't know the scent. This one's sparkling, it's bright, it's energetic. This is a little bit fruity. It's one that I really, really enjoy. I reach for this a lot in the summer months. This is Angel EDT, really, really love this one. Next up is Angel Eau Carissier, and this is the 2020 version. This is fun, this is tropical, it's sweet, it's a little bit creamy. This is another fragrance that I just think is so fun. It has a very simplistic note structure, but a beautiful tropical fragrance, great for the summer months. Next is Angel Ice Star, and when I brought this into my collection, it really did fill a gap that I was missing. It gives me a very tropical vibe to it, makes me feel like I'm on a beach. It's kind of a coconut frutuli type fragrance, another great Mugler creation. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shift over to my Kaoli fragrances. This is Kaoli Vanilla 28, and this is absolutely, by far, my very favorite Kaoli fragrance. If you are a sweet gourmand lover, if you are a vanilla lover, you've gotta get your nose on this. The brown sugar, the warmth that you get from this vanilla is amazing. It's beautiful on its own. It layers well with other fragrances, a gorgeous, Gorgeous Kaoli scent that I love. This is Vanilla 28. Next up is Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper, also by Kaoli. This is one, there's just so much excitement when Kaoli releases a fragrance. So I, you know, this is one that I added to my collection as soon as they released it, but I did discover that this really isn't for me. There's too much of a spicy rose scent here, and I'm just not a huge fan of rose fragrances. People who like Intense Cafe, people who like Delena Exclusive, or people who like Oud Bouquet may really enjoy this one, Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper. Moving on to another Kaoli is Utopia Vanilla Cocoa. This is a gorgeous fragrance with beautiful notes. It has bourbon vanilla, it has coconut in it. This one will transport you to a vacation. It will make you think you're on a beach. This is a gorgeous scent as well. Moving on to the newest release by Kaoli, this is Eden Juicy Apple. With this fragrance, you get a burst of berries, you get a burst of lychee, but you absolutely get apple from this Samos. It is a very fresh scent, it's fruity, it's very, very nice. This one made me think back to Country Apple by Bath & Body Works, really a gorgeous scent. This will be nice for the summer months, not totally my style because I like warm gourmands, but one that I do enjoy. Worth a mention and not part of the 100 perfumes is Invite Only Amber. This is another one from Kaoli that I enjoy if you like those warm notes like cinnamon, vanilla, chocolate, hazelnut. This one makes me think of a beautiful candle keeping you warm during the festive winter months. All right, now I have La Belle by Jean-Paul Gaultier. To me, this is a smoky, kind of dense, but almost earthy vanilla fragrance. This is gorgeous for a lot of people and probably one of the more talked about fragrances in 2020 and 2021. In that same vein is La Belle Le Parfum. This is a deeper, denser, La Belle fragrance, this has the addition of tonka bean. It almost makes me feel like I'm getting a little bit of nuttiness in here, a little bit of fruitiness. There's pear in here as well. This is a great version of La Belle if you like a little bit more density to your fragrances. La Belle is also releasing a brand new fragrance. I'm not totally familiar with what it is, but I think it's a little bit more floral, so I'm interested to hear about that one when it's released. 
Moving on to the next fragrance is Flower Bomb by the House of Victor and Rolf. This is probably one of my favorite floral fragrances. It's sweet, it's such an easy wear, it's very gentle, it has vanilla in it, it has freesia tea and patchouli, a very easy, likable scent. Also by the House of Victor and Rolf is Bon Bon. This is a fragrance that I really, really loved and wore obsessively for a period of time around two years ago. Love the caramel in this scent. It is quite stunning. I should be reaching for this a little bit more. I also like to pair this with other fragrances that are a little intense, like Coco Mademoiselle Intense. For some reason, this seems to cut it and give it a little bit more sweetness. Really enjoy this one. Next up is Ariana Grande Cloud. This one has coconut, it has whipped cream, it has praline. Those are all balanced out by a little bit of freshness. And this is the kind of fragrance that I find refreshing in the summer months. One thing I'll say is that I do not find this to be a dupe for Baccarat Rouge 540. I feel like they smell quite different. Yes, they have that airiness to them, a little bit of sweetness. This one goes much more gourmand for me, and I don't feel like it is a dupe of Baccarat Rouge 540. I think there are better alternatives out there if you're trying to get that scent profile. Next up is Ariana Grande Cloud, and this is Cloud Intense or Cloud 2.0. This is just very much like the original Cloud. Just takes those gourmand notes just a little bit deeper, a little bit further. This is an amped up version of Cloud with a little bit less freshness. Really like this one, Cloud Intense by Ariana Grande. Baccarat Rouge 540, probably one of the most talked about fragrances in the fragrance community. Beautiful, sweet, woodiness, often referred to as having sponge sugar scent profile. Just really gorgeous. I understand why it is so loved. Amber Oud Rouge is a dupe, a clone. This is by Al Haramain for Baccarat Rouge 540. Some people say this smells more like the Extrait from Baccarat Rouge 540, and I kind of agree. It's right there in the middle. This has some added sweetness, but it's very, very similar. And in my opinion, this is the very best alternative that I've discovered for the original Baccarat Rouge 540. Moving on to Tribeca by Bond Number no. 9. This is one of my recent favorites. Really love this fragrance. It's also compared to Baccarat Rouge 540, but I feel like it's quite different. This is more gourmand. There are beautiful notes in this scent. There is caramel, there's cacao, there's hazelnut. This one has a rich, warm, cozy, comforting gourmand scent profile to it, and it doesn't go overly sweet. It's balanced out by some white florals. Really love this one. Next up is Mangerlan Sensual by Guerlain. This is a beautiful alternative to Mangerlan. I find this one to be incredibly beautiful. I sprayed it in my house. It wasn't a love at first sniff, but I sprayed it in my house and I became obsessed with the scent profile and really ended up loving this one. In that same vein is Mangerlan Intense, and this is probably my favorite from the line. This is deeper, it's warmer, a beautiful lavender scent in here, a tiny bit of licorice if I remember correctly, a deep woody vanilla, beautiful scent. Next up is Seductive Noir by Guess. This is very similar to the original Mangerlan. It has that lavender scent profile, even though in this one there is sage instead of lavender. If you want that Mangerlan scent, but not at that same price, definitely recommend checking this one out. Another Guerlain that I've talked about before and I really love is Spiritus du Blavigny. This is a beautiful, boozy, vanilla scent that I will forever love. Really recommend if you like boozy fragrances to give this one a shot. Next up, I'll talk about a few fragrances from Sol de Janeiro. First up is Brazilian Crush and this is Tarosa 62. This is a sweet, caramelic, nutty fragrance. It is an absolute delicious gourmand that makes you feel like you are on a beach or somewhere tropical. Chirosa 71, this is warm, sweet, it's very delicious. It makes you think of a s'more, a buttery graham cracker. There's some nuttiness to this one too. Really a huge love for somebody who likes gourmand perfumes. Chirosa 40, also from Sol de Janeiro. This one has a similar scent profile to Kaoli Vanilla 28. The difference I find with this one is it has more fruitiness to it. If I remember correctly, this one might have plum and there's a darker fruity scent profile to this one. I do enjoy it, but I'll probably always reach for Vanilla 28 over this one. Shifting gears to my Jimmy Choo fragrances. First, I have Jimmy Choo by Jimmy Choo. This is a great fragrance with 
toffee and pear in it. This is the type of fragrance that gives me a fun vibe, a flirty vibe. This is one that I would wear out to a nightclub or wear out for a date night out, a really fun fragrance. Similarly aligned to that one is Jimmy Choo Fever. This is also the type of fragrance that I wanna wear on a date night out, a fun night out. It just screams fun to me. This one screams festive too. There's a plum note in this one that makes it a little bit more fruity than the original Jimmy Choo, another great option from the line, and both of these are affordable. Also by Jimmy Choo is Illicit. This is sweet, it's a honeyed spice scent, it is a little bit caramelic. This is a nice fragrance as well of the Jimmy Choo's. This is the one I reach for the least, but I do like the sweetness in here. Another one that I find to be budget friendly. Moving on to a couple fragrances from the House of BDK. First is Gris Charnel. This is an incredible spicy sandalwood fragrance. This one has cardamom in it. And if you like sandalwood, I highly suggest getting your nose on this one. This is, in my opinion, a very beast mode fragrance. A little bit goes a long way. I sprayed it one time on my skin and my husband thought it was a little bit too overpowering. Still, I find it to be lovely. Also by BDK is Passe Soie. This is a very fruity fragrance, but it's a very sophisticated fruity fragrance. It has keints in it, which is sort of a dry note, but this is one that's different than all of the other fragrances I have in my collection. The most worn by me in October. Really love this one. Next up is Olympia by the House of Paco Rabanne. This is one that has a sweet, salty, vanillic vibe to it. This is one that my husband enjoys on me, but I don't wear it very often. It just feels like warm skin on the beach, a really nice scent. Speaking of the beach is Bobbi Brown Beach. This is one of my very favorite tropical fragrances. It does not have coconut in it. It has sand, seawater, mandarin orange, and jasmine. I find this to be exquisite. I'm almost out. I want other fragrances that make me feel the way this one does. So if you know of anything similar, please let me know. Next up is an affordable celebrity fragrance. This is Prerogative by Britney Spears. This one is flirty. It's likable, it's pleasant, it has a little bit of coffee. This one is very similar to Black Opium. Black Opium is a little bit more complex than this one, but I find this to be a great alternative, and this one is very, very affordable. Next up is a fragrance by Britney Spears. This is Midnight Fantasy, and I actually wasn't sure if this was Midnight Fantasy, but I think this was a special release. This one has a fruitiness to it, but it's kind of a dark fruitiness, it's sweet. Smelled this on somebody many, many years ago and had to have it myself. Still enjoy the scent profile and find it to be very pretty. On to another celebrity fragrance is Fancy by Jessica Simpson. This is one that has a little bit of a synthetic caramel feel, a vanilla undertone, a little bit of fruitiness. Definitely recommend checking this one out because it is a very reasonable, affordable price point. And I found myself loving this as a gourmand lover. Next up is Gold Couture by Juicy Couture. I feel like everywhere I go, I hear about men loving this fragrance. This is one that's very sweet. It's also caramelic and it has a playful caramel scent to it. So if you're looking for something like that, this one is great. Next up is Lady Diana by the House of Alexandria Fragrances. This is a dupe, a clone of Delina by Parfums de Marly. I think it's a very well done dupe. It has this brightness, this freshness, this sweetness, a little bit tart and tangy. Really recommend checking this out if you don't wanna pay Delina prices. Next up is Hugo Boss, The Scent Private Accord. And this was another fragrance that was very talked about for a period of time. This is a cacao scent. It also has mandarin orange in it. I was absolutely hooked on this one for a period of time. If you like cacao, I definitely recommend checking this one out. Moving on to Cacao Dreams by Alexandria Fragrances. I do think this is the last dupe or clone that I have in this list. This is the one that I also really enjoy. If you like chocolate, if you like the smell of a Tootsie Roll, I highly recommend checking this one out. I was also addicted to this scent for a period of time as well. Okay, another tropical beachy scent is Bronze Goddess, and this is by the House of Estee Lauder. Now, to me, this one smells quite similar to Black Opium by YSL, but it has more of a tropical flair. So if you're looking for something like that, this one's accessible. You can usually find it at Ulta, but I've also come across this one at places like Marshalls and Ross, Bronze Goddess by Estee Lauder. With this next fragrance, I'm gonna start off by saying this is not for everyone. This is Hot Couture by Givenchy. It's got a little bit of a 
peppery, spicy smokiness to it. It is a little bit of a fruity perfume. This one is very nostalgic to me for some reason. If you like that fruity smokiness in your fragrance, definitely recommend checking this one out. I like it far more than I thought I would. Moving on to Black Opium by the House of YSL. This is a sweet coffee scent profile with a little bit of a vanillic undertone. Very popular in the fragrance industry, but I do like this fragrance. It is popular for good reason. Really interested to try their new release with Fig. Maybe it's called Illicit Green. So let me know if you've tried that one. Next up is Ari by Ariana Grande. And this is an easy, uncomplicated marshmallow scent. This one is very, very sweet, but it's also very affordable. So if you like something in that sweet marshmallow vein, definitely check this one out. Another fragrance that is very sweet is Live Irresistible Delicious by the House of Givenchy. I bought this fragrance because of the rave reviews on it, but I have to say it's quite similar to La Via Belle Intense. It's also quite similar to Girl of Now. It's not the same, but it's similar. And I find myself reaching for those over this one. Still a great fragrance, and I do think sweet gourmand lovers will enjoy it. Next up is Poison Girl EDT, and this was my scent of the evening on New Year's Eve. This is one that has a citrusy vibe to it, but it's vanillic, it's sweet, a beautiful dry down. And this one's uplifting, it's cheerful to me, a fragrance that I have positive memories with, Poison Girl EDT. Next up is Fatal Intense by Agent Provocateur. This fragrance has the added note of chili pepper, but it doesn't go too spicy. It's sweet, a little bit spicy, it is very subtle to me. It has a tiny bit of a leathery presence, and every time I smell this, I forget why I liked it so much, but I do really enjoy this fragrance and suggest this for people who like a little bit of spiciness, a little bit of sweetness, and who like leather in their perfumes. Next up is Girl of Now Shine. This is a sweet scent. It has orange blossom in it. This is one that I prefer over the original Girl of Now, but I do think I want the original in my collection as well. This is one that I wore a ton when I was on vacation in Florida last summer, and it just made me so cheerful to wear Girl of Now Shine. Next up is Arabian Horse by Alexandria Fragrances. This is a clone of Herod by Parfums de Marly, and this is absolutely intoxicating. This is my very favorite scent to smell on my husband. I find it to be incredible. I believe there is tobacco in here, there's cinnamon, there's vanilla. I definitely suggest, if you have similar tastes to me, to get your nose on this one. Next up is Casablanca by the House of Swiss Arabian. This is one that I bought blindly, like many other perfumes here. Almost all of my fragrances that I have, I bought blindly. This one just didn't really totally work out for me, but I'm really on the fence. Sometimes I really like it, sometimes I don't. There's something I've considered to be menacing in other videos I've talked about, that's just a little bit sharp in this one. Yes, it has caramel, but I feel like the grapes or something in here, maybe the apple, is a little bit too sharp for my nose. I haven't figured it out yet. Moving on to Tender Romance. This is by Ralph Lauren. This is one that I smelled on somebody else and I absolutely adored it on her. It feels very smooth, it has cashmere wood in it, it has benzoin, just a really nice fragrance. It isn't super gourmandy. I have found that I like the Romance collection. I'd really like to add Beyond Romance by Ralph Lauren to my collection. This is a great option, but it may have been discontinued. Next up is Good Girl by Carolina Herrera. I did receive this as a gift and I do personally like the bottle. It's a nice scent. There are white florals in here. There's a little bit of a nuttiness. There's cacao in here too, but there are so many notes. I find myself getting confused when I wear this, and it's not my favorite fragrance, but I understand why other people like this one. Next up is Amo by the House of Ferragamo. This is one that is sort of a sweet, fruity, vanillic fragrance. This is one my husband likes on me. It is kind of bright, it's vibrant, it feels a little bit fresh. Definitely one I recommend checking out if you want something affordable in that vein. Next up is Atara by the House of Michael Malul, and this is an underrated fragrance in my opinion, one I don't hear about very much. 
This is one that I find similar to La Via Belle or I find it similar to Angel EDT by Mugler. Does not smell like them, but I feel like people who like those perfumes will enjoy the beautiful pair in this one. Next up is Chocolate Greedy by the House of Montal, and this is the only Montal I have in my collection. I definitely recommend this one for chocolate lovers, for gourmand lovers, people who like uh, you know, dried fruit in their chocolate. You might really enjoy this one. Next up is To Be Exotic Jungle by Police. This is one I bought because of the comparisons to La Nuit Trezor a la Folie. It does not smell like that to me. It doesn't have that warm vanilla depth to it. It has a little bit more fruitiness to it, but still I think it's a fun bottle, an affordable fragrance, and definitely one I suggest checking out if you want something in that vein. Next up is The Only One Intense by the House of Dolce & Gabbana. This is the fragrance that taught me that I do like white florals. I had this perception that maybe I didn't. I do like them when they're done in a way that has some sweet gourmand notes in them. This has vanilla, it has coconut and apple. A must try if you like white floral fragrances, if you like gourmands with a little bit of flair to them. Moving on to R.E.M. This is by Ariana Grande. I have no idea how she's keeping up with all of the releases. This one is nice. It also has kinks like Passe Soie. This is a little bit more sweet, a little bit more caramelic, has a soothing quality to it. Also really enjoy this one. Next up is Scandal by Night, and this is by Jean-Paul Gaultier. This is one that has a little bit of a cough syrup vibe, a little bit medicinal when you first spray it on your skin, but it dries down to a honey cherry scent that I do like, but I'm not sure this one is a love. Next up is Lipstick On. This is by the House of Replica. This is a deep, dark, kind of powdery iris fragrance with some beautiful bourbon vanilla in it. Really love this one for a date night out, but I do believe it has been discontinued. Next up is James Bond 007 for Women by the House of Eon Productions. This is one that I found out about in a magazine at one point in time, and it was my signature scent for at least two years. It has a beautiful fruitiness to it. I have some very special memories to the time period where I wore this frequently, and I will always have this in my collection as long as I can. Next up is Nirvana Amethyst by the House of Elizabeth and James. This is a sweet, dark scent. It has some tobacco in it. I believe it might have some cedar in it, honeysuckle, a gorgeous fragrance for tobacco lovers, and one of my favorites from the House of Elizabeth and James. Next up is Kenzo Flower Lilixer, and this is by the House of Kenzo, and I want so badly to love this fragrance. I included it in a declutter recently, and as I smell it now, it does smell beautiful. There's raspberry in this one, there's bourbon, vanilla, it's a little bit powdery. It reminds me of nail polish remover, and for some reason, I cannot get that out of my head, but as I smell it now, it does smell gorgeous. Next up is Fresh Cream Warm Cashmere by the House of Philosophy, and this is my only fragrance from that house. This is one that I wore last evening to bed. I've been feeling a little bit under the weather and I needed something comforting, and this is absolutely that. Perfect for people who like sweet, sweet scents. Moving on to You by the House of Glossier. This is a sweet, gentle, powdery vanilla musk. This is the type of scent that isn't overpowering. Like I said, it's very gentle. This is one, if you like Iris, you should get your hands on and check it out. Really enjoy this scent profile. Next up is Bois Dore by the House of Van Cleef and Arpels, and this fragrance is beautiful. It's gorgeous, it's intoxicating, and it's narcotic to me. This is probably one of my deepest love fragrances. This is one I hope to always have in my collection. It is a beautiful nutty tobacco vanilla scent, one I highly recommend checking out by Van Cleef and Arpels. Next up is one that I debated leaving on this list. This is by Dapper Fragrances, and this is their Santal Complete Dupe or Clone. This one is stunning. It is very well done. It's very similar to the original fragrance. So if you're looking for something in that Santal Complete vein that is not that Santal Complete price, highly recommend getting your nose on this. Moving on to Jazz Club by the House of Replica. This is a very boozy scent profile. This is one that I absolutely adore on my husband. I think it makes him smell amazing. Highly recommend this one to people who like boozy fragrances. Next up is Valentino Donna, and this is by the House of Valentino. This is a stunning bottle. I absolutely adore the bottle. I just couldn't fall in love with the scent profile. I do think it's a nice scent. It has a little 
bit of leather in it. I believe it also has iris in the scent profile. I would have thought I would love this one. It just wasn't one that worked out for me. So, so sad about it. A nostalgic fragrance for me is Rapture by the House of Victoria's Secret. This one is very ambery. It's one that I really liked at one point in time. I'm not sure I would reach for this over other fragrances that I have now, but I do have so many good memories of when I used to wear this ages and ages ago. Rapture by Victoria's Secret. This is Incredible Things by Taylor Swift. This is one I brought into my collection after smelling on my sister. I really liked it on her, and so I bought it for myself. Not one I'm reaching for anymore, but I did love the scent profile a while back. Moving on to a scent that isn't really quite for me, this is Queen and Monsters by the House of Henry Rose. I first saw this one on Fragrantica and then I heard a colleague ask about it. I did blind buy it and it's just not my style. This isn't one that I would find myself wearing. This is Queens and Monsters by the House of Henry Rose. I've gone into depth on other videos. Next is Vinnie West Indies by the House of Ligny St. Barts. This is a high priced fragrance and this is one that I do enjoy. I got a sample of it, fell in love with the sample and just didn't think I could move on with my life without this perfume. But I do feel like there are other options that are very similar to the caramelic vanilla you get here. Outremer Vinny and Solanotes Vinny are both fragrances that are quite similar to Vinny West Indies. So I do feel if you're interested in that scent profile but you don't want to pay that price, checking these out before you buy Vinny West Indies. Next up is Princess by the House of Killian. And this is one that has a beautiful marshmallow note to it, but that is balanced out by green tea. Really, really enjoy the scent profile here. And I have a lot of really great memories from this fragrance. Next up is Mercedes-Benz Club Black. And this is another fragrance that is just a really good vanilla. It's often compared to Cologne of the Missions, which has been discontinued. So if you want something in that vein, I highly recommend checking this one out. Another fragrance that is a vanilla I stumbled across, but I did actually buy this one in a store, is Eau Dwell, and this is the EDT. Really like the green vanilla scent profile in this one and recommend checking it out if you like green vanillas. Next up is Vanilla Bourbon and this is by the House of Mix Bar. This comes at a very affordable price, but it is a beautifully done vanilla scent. It's called Bourbon Vanilla, has a little bit of booziness to it, a little bit of woodiness. It's a gentle vanilla that smells absolutely beautiful. Highly recommend checking this one out. Next is a Vanilla Affair, and I've done a video on this one before comparing it to Spiritueux Stublevene. This is also kind of a boozy, warm, cozy, sophisticated vanilla. There are a lot of vanilla notes in here, so if you like vanilla, this one is probably worth checking out. This one is a Vanilla Affair by the House of Dua. Next up is another vanilla fragrance that I just added to my collection. This is No Vanille by the House of M. Mikalef, and this is an incredible vanilla. This one is a little bit boozy. I think there's cognac in it. I think there's rum in it. This one also has incredibly done floral notes. Really, really enjoying this one. Sort of makes me think of a cologne. I think anybody can wear this one. There's something in this that I find so addictive. Highly recommend getting a sample of this one. I think it'll be re-released in February. Now another vanilla Dior Addict is rich, it's dark, it's intoxicating, it has a little bit of a smoky vibe to it. There are white florals in here. If you like vanilla, I do suggest getting your nose on this one. And last up is Hypnotic Poison, also by Dior. This is a vanilla that's nuanced. It's done a little bit differently than other vanillas. There's a nuttiness in here. It's sweet, it's gourmandish. This is a head turner type fragrance that I do suggest checking out if you like something in that nutty vanilla vein. All right guys, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I truly appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video on 100 fragrances in my collection, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate those of you who have watched my videos. I am so grateful to have 100 videos. It has been such a fun hobby. I've loved connecting with other enthusiasts who have the same passion and energy for fragrance that I do. I hope you have an amazing rest of your weekend. I hope you have a lot to be grateful and thankful for. And until next time, I'll see you soon.